last year when we were doing this, you said something that was really powerful. You said, there's no metric for how many lives we save. Yes. Um, there's no metric for that. Either of my sons, Joshua or Noah. Uh, Joshua graduated, he was a 2014 class, and Noah would have graduated in 2017, last year, but uh, he died three years ago, just over three years ago, uh, April 28, 2015. He took his own life. One of the things we're really grateful for is that two nights before Noah died, one of the assignments he was supposed to do for his treatment center was to write an assignment called The Real Me Is. And he had written, The real me is intelligent, sensitive, honest, afraid, insecure, soccer player, sober, golfer, singer, daredevil, romantic, nerd, compassionate, profound, mama's boy, caretaker, logical, funny, ballsy, curious, peaceful, spiritual. I love playground swings, video games, sweatpants, cuddling, animals, and reading. It's written by Noah on April 26, 2015. Three days before he died. I don't have the answer if all suicides can be prevented. I don't know what we could have done differently for Noah. If we would have known that Noah was at such high risk for suicide, we may have been able to save his life that day. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for youth between the ages of 10 and 24. Each day in the U.S. are an average of 3,470 attempts by young people in high school between grades 9 and 12. There were more than 600,000 lives lost to suicide from 2004 to 2016. Over 11,000 of those were in the state of Colorado. Jefferson County experienced 1,298. Of that, 76 were under the age of 20, and 13 of those were under the age of 14. Community organizations in Golden, as well as the students at Golden High School, are working together to change the stigma of mental health and help grow the community in prosperous ways. As students, we are very stressed because this is our midway point to being adults. It's a much harder moment to be a kid and a much harder moment to be an adult trying to support kids than we've ever seen. There are so many things going on in society that makes it really, really intense to be perfect and to look great and to have a bunch of friends. Students now are more isolated than ever before. They're not getting together at a restaurant. They're not going out. They're sitting alone in their basement, in their room, and they're texting their friends. But I think there's something to be said for that person-to-person -person interaction. One of the things that happens with depression, and often with kids that are suicidal, is they become isolated, they feel alienated, they feel like they're all alone. They feel like they don't matter, they're not seen, they're invisible. Maybe nobody will know if I'm not here anywhere, nobody will care. We do have a lot of problems with dealing with mental illness. It suffers from being one of these um, disorders that people don't like talking about. The things that are not talked about are usually more dangerous and potentially more damaging than the things that we're addressing and that we're aware of. When you hear the word suicide, it's scary. Sometimes people don't want to deal with scary things. They want to put it in a closet. They want to not be involved with it because if they're not involved, then it somehow doesn't exist. There's just so many parts of our lives that we need to work on. Positive friends, positive activities, spirituality, making those really strong pillars of your life. 
what creates hope for us, what creates strength for us. It's, you know, those factors in our, our life, those things that maybe we take for granted, like healthy activities and positive supports through friends, through family, and accessing those when we're at, in times of need. How can the arts help to solve this problem? How can the arts get people thinking about maybe concepts that they haven't thought about before in maybe a new way? The Foothills Arts Center contacted us and they said, hey, we'd like to have a conversation about some stuff with some, with some students at Golden High School. They found out what we did and said, we'd love to see what that's like. How many of you have been in situations where social media has been used in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable? Raise your hand and look around. You all are a part of this high school. As students, as staff, as teachers, a simple reminder that you're all connecting is so important. Golden High School has a lot of care at this school, and that was really illustrated in such an enthusiastic way today in the performance. Felt like that was truly what this community is about. Sources of Strength is a strength-based upstream prevention program. It's really that idea that a rising tide lifts all boats, that if you can move upstream and have an impact up there, you can affect all of these different downstream kinds of things. What are the needs of your student body? I feel like mental health is just a big problem. Yeah, that one right. is. Even if it's a societal problem, I feel like we could still do stuff in the community and try and fix it. What do you see in regard to mental health with students at Golden High School? What I'm thinking is missing is more of an opportunity to get help. I feel like if people understood the process better, yeah. they would be more willing to go get help. I love this school and I'm finally having an opportunity to shape a group that's able to make it better, to chip away at the problems that I see in our community. Being in Sources of Strength, just being in this type of a community where we are trying to influence people's lives to make themselves better, I feel like that in a way makes me better. Our mental health has gotten a lot better, I think, overall, because there was a lot of suicide, and that has gone down progressively as the years have continued with the Sources program being implemented at the school. Our goal is to create a community where everyone has someone to go to, really connecting the whole school, making sure that no one is ever left out of anything. Tell people that they have a safe and trusted adult that they can talk to. It's really helpful to improve the school environment, which is our ultimate goal. I notice an overall happier campus environment. I think people are more willing to talk to others and look for help when they think they need it. And I think Sources of Strength has really helped create that positive environment people need. The power of programs like the Foothills Arts Center and like Sources of Strength is they find ways to connect kids to more and more community leaders and to more and more community resources. And they're connected through an activity or a purpose that they love and to people that they know care about them. I think these are exactly the kind of connections that keep kids healthy in times when we worry about them the most. Every kid needs to have a group of people that aren't necessarily their parents who believe in them, who are invested in them, who know their name, who care about them. Golden High School students are a very important voice in our town. When they are concerned about something, the entire community is concerned. Foothills Art Center felt like art could play a role with what the students were doing. Foothills Art Center wrote a grant for Arts and Society. An Arts and Society grant sponsored them to work with Sources of Strength. Sources of Strength also works with the Golden High School. So I'm working with the youth there to create a mural that will be permanent in the city of Golden. These kids, when they are struggling, and it reflects this community perfectly, they get away from technology and from cars and from roads and from school and from other people often and get commune of nature. We wanted to use the idea of aspen trees because we thought 
Aspen trees, it's rooted as one whole system. And even though it's a bunch of different trees, and we kind of felt like that's our community is, we might be a bunch of different trees, but we're all rooted in the Golden community. The mural itself is uplifting and cheerful, and actually a brilliant way to address the problem. We're all connected. We're all part of the same organism. If one part of us is affected with some kind of illness, then the rest of us are going to be affected by that same illness. Isn't that a, the perfect metaphor for community? All of our social issues require conversation and dialogue. We need to find ways to listen to each other, and the sooner we can start to learn how to do that and start practicing and engaging in that, the better off we'll be, and we'll actually get to, I believe, start to make some progress on some of those things. Defeating the stigma and opening lines of communication is so key in getting people the help that they need. I've been just amazed by how active that our students are in terms of solving big problems that people that are my age think, oh, there's nothing we can do about, but the kids really feel empowered to go out and make a change and make things different. And we're teaching generations before us what it's like to cultivate healthy, happy relationships, what it's like to care about yourself and want to empower others and to care about the environment and the world around you. And I think in a lot of ways, seeing that as early as the high school level gives people hope that the future is going to be better. Every human life has value. Reach out to someone, anyone, to talk to about this. Look them in the eye and say, you are valuable, you are loved, and you have something to offer that nobody else in this world can offer. And try, try not to compare yourself to the people around you, but just be who you are and learn to love that person that you are. Because only if you love yourself will you be able to love others. And we need a lot more love in this world. If you think you may harm yourself or attempt suicide, tell someone who can help you. Call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK. If a family member or friend is in crisis, do not leave them alone. Listen to them. Take what they say seriously. Urge them to seek the help of mental health professionals. Show them that you care. We are all connected. Be a source of strength. My name is Christopher Reed. I'm a member of the Golden Community, and I'm here for the Golden Community. My name is Maura McInerney. I'm a member of the Golden Community, and I'm here for this community. My name is Hassan Najjar. I'm a member of this community, and I'm here for this community. My name is Deborah Bryan. I'm a member of this community, and I'm here for this community. My name is Emily Lewis. I am a member of the Golden Community, and I am here for the Golden Community. My name is Mike Johnston. I'm a member of this community, and I'm here for this community. My name is Trent Norman. I'm a member of this community, and I'm here for this community. My name is Marjorie Sloan. I'm a member of the Golden Community, and I'm here for the community. My name is Eric Hockley. I'm a member of this community, and I'm here for this community. I'm Rebecca Brown Edelman. I'm a member of this community and I'm here for this community. My name is Abigail Post. I'm a member of the Golden Community and I'm here for this community. My name is Christy DeMeyer. I'm a member of this community and I'm here for this community. My name is Scott Lomery. I'm a member of this community and I'm here for this community. I'm Peter Ewers. And I'm Beverly Ewers and we are members of this community. And we are here for this community.